On a Wednesday morning in April, around 9 a.m., Caleb and I drove north from Oklahoma City towards Stillwater, Oklahoma to look at some drilling and fracking sites. We had a hand-drawn paper map, our smartphones, and a physical map of Oklahoma we found stashed inside the door of Caleb's car. We were working on a project about fracking in Oklahoma, and we weren't really sure what we would find. Oklahoma is currently one of the largest producers of natural gas in the United States because of a recent boom in hydraulic fracturing. Now, <laughs> horizontal drilling. So now with one well, instead of drilling one hole where you presumably might get oil and gas from some radius around it, now you're going down and at a 90 degree angle, not a 90, but more or less, now from one well you're sending out multiple bores to a particular formation. But it's still the same thing. You're still going to case everything off. You're still going to use explosive charges to make those holes no problem. Here's the problem I see, because <laughs> now you're going to, with very um, powerful hydraulic pressures, try to artificially fracture these reservoir rocks. Or maybe I should back up. These are actually rocks that may have been the source for oil. We never used to drill those. Now we're drilling the black shales where the organic material came from to produce the oil. So you're fracturing this. It doesn't have any natural porosity or permeability. So you're creating it by fracturing it. Here's several problems now. I think fracturing is inherently a chaotic or complex process. I don't think you can completely control that <laughs> Within an eight mile stretch of land on Highway 108, we found where a massive pipeline was being installed, a major drilling site, some sort of chemical storage facilities, and other various pipes clearly related to the natural gas operation, but we didn't really know how. As we were driving around, I kind of sort of felt almost like we had to sneak. Not that we were really doing anything wrong. I mean, we were just driving around in the country taking pictures of stuff. I guess maybe I just felt like if someone, like, stopped us, we wouldn't have a very good story. <laughs> like, Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was gathering the same feeling, and it was kind of a weird kind of meta thing to think about, like, hmm, I have this feeling, why do I feel this way? It's not really wrong for me to be walking around taking pictures. But it does look suspicious. I mean, there's the easy answer. It looks suspicious... And then there's the other answer that people may not want you snooping around fracking site or a drilling site. Maybe they don't want people getting the wrong idea or maybe the right idea. I mean, it's no lie that the oil and natural gas industry has made a lot of jobs in Oklahoma. Not just now, but forever. I mean, yeah. that's our history. We populated the state because of the boom in oil. So... I think that a lot of people have a lot of faith, or if not, maybe faith isn't the right word, but I think that a lot trust. of people just like, yeah, trust the oil and natural gas industry, and it's just kind of an accepted thing here. And so if someone were to pull you over and say, what are you doing? And you're like, we're investigating these fracking sites. I think that they would be suspicious. I think that they would be upset. I think that there's like maybe this defense mechanism that I've experienced when you bring mm. it up that's like, you don't understand, like, my family has gotten so much money from this, or, like, you know, like, my uncle or my dad, like, works for the oil and gas company. Like, it's so ingrained in our identity. I think people would think of us as, I mean, I, like, I think yeah. people think of us as, like, not Oklahoman. Like, maybe yeah. we're from another state. By not supporting oil, natural gas. But really, it's just a, a healthy need to question. I definitely want to know what all that, like, everything was, like, specifically. Yeah. You know, at one point we came across this 
really loud noise. And we didn't even realize it at first, but we just saw this big plant that looked like it was like chemical storage or something. It looked like perhaps maybe it was some kind of refining plant or something. And, we're like, and so we drive back and we're going to take a picture and we roll the window down. And I think I said, hey, do you hear that? And I don't even think you noticed it. No, not yet. I was but, driving the getaway car. Yeah. <laughs> But it was so loud. I mean, it was so loud. And then to just think that, like, like I, you know, what is it? Like, that's what I want to know. I just want to know, what was that noise? I agree. Like, you can, there's a certain general level of knowledge you can get by reading about the process of fracking and, like, drilling. And, you know, they pump things into the earth. And this is how it's all supposed to work in hypotheticals. But when you actually see the equipment and the things they're using, it's not clear what's happening, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm watching or visually seeing all these things, and I kept thinking, like, well, I, I really have no idea what that's used for or what part of the process that is aiding or what purpose does it play in the larger role of hydraulic fracking. But you clearly know it has some sort of part in the natural gas industry. You're just, that's what I was, I think, when I left, I was just like, I, I want to know and I want to know why it's so hard to know more. Like, it's not like obviously intuitive when you just look at this big piece of metal sticking up from the ground, what's going on underneath the ground. Stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going. You better stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going. You better stop now. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going. You better stop now. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going. You better stop now. What's that sound